Right. Hello everyone. Today we're going to be learning about Storybook. So what is Storybook? Storybook is a front-end workshop for building UI components and pages in isolation. Thousands of teams use it for UI development, testing, and documentation. It's open source and free. Why? You know, in today's application development, there's so many requirements. There's a million different devices, screen sizes, so responsiveness is, is a big one but also multiple browsers. We got four main browsers, but there are even more on top of that. We have accessibility uh, standards that we have to meet, especially if it's for compliancy or just usability in general. Uh, so it could be a quality concern. Performance and all the variations needed to fit use cases and places to, uh, a place to organize it. Um, so all these requ requirements can be tough to manage and handle. That's why Storybook was created. Quick facts. Airbnb, IBM, and Dropbox use it. It's compatible with React, Vue, and Angular. It is used by 500,000 devs, and it has 60,000 stars on GitHub. It integrates with Jest, React testing library, and Cypress, which is very interesting. And it has 1.3 million weekly downloads. That's quite huge compared to the next best in line which is Playwright at about 200,000. Bit gets 50,000 and in case y'all are interested, Ladle, an up-and-comer because it's quite younger than all these, I think has about 80,000 if I'm not mistaken. Don't quote me. But, and that leads me to the next section which are the main competitors to Storybook. One being Stogitis, two Playroom, um, and 3-bit, which I've used none of these. So yeah, in the repo, I pasted a picture, let me see, of NPM trends. And this kind of shows where Storybook lines up against all of its competition. If you hover these and you actually go to the NPM trends, you can get weekly downloads on this and this is for downloads in past year so as you can see storybook is is quite popular let's back over so without further ado let's go ahead and clone this uh, repo we will go here and get my URL and let's go ahead and clone it go ahead and CD into it And then we're going to do a our first command, which is initializing our application. And, and this is going to give us your. So first of all, your app has to be created already to run this command. Um, it's it's a lot more than an install because it's going to give you all of your dependencies. Now we should be able to run um, one of the commands it added. which it added a couple things. Main config, which is, well, your main config file. Um, and this, you can handle add-ons, um, layout, global decorates, global decorators, things like that. Preview, this is a config file as well, but it's specifically for your storybook UI. Let's go ahead and run our app. Um, this also came with starter files. You see this stories directory. Um, all these components, these are basically, this is like a get started documentation you can use. I'll show you now. And it comes with all these great starter files. If you go to the introduction documentation, this will give you a bunch of useful links to um, continue to up your storybook game. Um, let's go ahead and go into the button component. This is a button story. This comes with documentation. Um, as you can see, we have all our variations, and they're all individually labeled here. You can change these um, with controls down here. You can change the label, the text. You can change the background color. So it's pretty customizable. This sidebar you can hide if you want. You can zoom up if you need to see like this doesn't have any hover there's no really interaction at all that's 
that's beside the fact. You can zoom out, <clears throat> refresh, you can change the background. Check see what it looks like on dark mode. <clears throat> Get a grid. Here's the responsive aspect, and this is all customizable, but small mobile, large mobile, tablet, you get the point. And I do the, I do believe this is customizable. And then you can get measurements. And then going on down here, we have actions, um, which there are none, but this could be for actual like DOM manipulation, if I'm not mistaken. And then you have interactions, which is like more about logging event listeners if you have a handle click it'll log it down here and yeah that's uh this is basically the starter files but we're going to delete all these i'm going to go down here i'm going to show y'all how to write a story real quick and we're going to start off by creating a fun button story and this is how you name stories storybook by a dot stories dot js prefix and we're gonna go ahead and go in here and the first thing we need to do is import our fun button and react then we're gonna go ahead and Set up our title and what component this story is going to be about. And this is going to be our fun button. Pretty, pretty obvious. Component is going to be our fun button. And this basically determines where your story goes in the story list. And the title basically corresponds with the path you'll see in your in your UI. So we have that. Let's go ahead and create. We're gonna go, we're gonna have several variations of this. So it's always useful to use the template function that Storybook gives you. And in this function, you can give it, you can pass it args, and you can invoke your component that you're testing passing it that arcs with spread operator sweet now we have something reusable let's go ahead and start with our first story which is usually called default and then we're going to take and tap into that template functions bind function and then after we do that we can go right below the dot notation and say dot args and here's where we can neatly define our args starting with well, I guess say equal Starting with children, which you know is our button text. And then the next prop, size. And this can be one of three, small, medium, large. We'll go with medium. And then we have variation, which we also have three potential variations. Um, default. Uh, outline and colorful I think and we'll go with default obviously for our default button and then for theme we'll just go light which we have light oh so the variation there's default outline and ghost that's right the theme is light dark and colorful all right cool and we have our first story let's go ahead and Go over here and test, and we don't have any text. Let's go ahead and see why. 
children. Huh. Forgot. Typo. And we go over here, story, and take off this. We have a button text. And we can go to controls. We can change this if we want. We can change basically anything in our prop types is enumerated and we can use that um, and modify that. Now we got this, let's go ahead and add another variation. We'll call this small outline. We'll give it a size of small variation of outline and a theme I'll just do a theme of light let's go ahead and test this one out and we have a small outline sweet let's add a third and final variation and, and you can get real creative with these variations you can name them anything you want but we're gonna name these based on what ChatGPT generated large which aka ChatGPT uh, made this fun button component for me so yeah button text it's gonna be large theme is gonna be ghost or variation is gonna be ghost theme colorful Cool. Let's go validate large ghost. All right. Looks good. All right. Cool. Now let's go ahead and add some add ons. Um, the first add on I'm going to add on is the auto docs. And used to back in the day, and if you follow the chat GPT rabbit hole, you used to have to write documentation with Markdown. Now all you have to do is simply add this this one file. If you notice this tags autodoc, it's configured in your main JS. And this allows you to just simply add this one line and now you have documentation for this story. Let me see if it's added it. Yep. It's added it. Now you have like a clean documentation, something similar you'd see in Bootstrap, but this is for your custom component. And that's easy, but now Let's go ahead and add on the accessibility. For this, you're going to have to install. You can use Yarn or NPM, whatever you choose. I'm going to go, let me see, just a sec. This needs to be dev. And now that we have that, we just got to add one line to the config file. That's going to be the main. And you're going to go under add ons and you're going to add the alley add on. So now we have everything. Let's make sure everything's saved. Should be able to run. And now we should get the accessibility add on. And going down here, we have accessibility add-on. And you can see all the tests that Storybrick runs against your um, elements to make sure they're accessible. That's really useful. Most of this is more useful for designers or UX uh, folks. Developers don't seem to care about this a lot. That's OK. In the design world, it has lots of implications, though. And, and, it, and it can sometimes have legal, legal implications but I'm off that soapbox. This is basically been added for every component. Also, I will add, if you want to test against blurry vision or, or colorblind, this is, a, this is a good little tool too. This shows you what your UI looks like blurred. I guess I'm assuming these are different forms, probably 
somebody could help me with that, but it's kind of interesting. But yeah, this is everything on Storybook. If you want to keep digging into this, I left some links in the repo. Things not covered that you may want to go over. The visual testing, that's real similar to kind of Ladle's uh, snapshot where it, 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 it does a snap, actual snapshot. Not like snapshot test. Um, and then compares them. And that may be comparable to what Ladle does good. And there's test coverage. I've mentioned that several times. That'll that'll tell you whether or not you've you've utilized every variation of your button in your test. So yeah, if you have three variations, but your component covers four or five, uh, test coverage will pull that up. Um, and then there's snapshot tests, which is brought to you by Just, and you can run your stories as like in a test runner, kind of like you do with your Jest test. Then there's integrations with Jest, React Testing Library, and Cypress, which those are real interesting. If you want to run a, a story directly in React Testing Library, you can do that. Um, and then other useful links like Storybook, Official Docs, and Essential Add-ons. But yeah, um, that's Storybook. I hope y'all enjoyed this. I hope it was useful. And thank you.